So our next speaker is uh, someone that we stole from University of California at San Francisco, Dr. Jason Liu, um, and along with Dr. Mark Shiroishi, who's also here, and some of our other uh, neuroradiology colleagues, we um, have a weekly tumor board where we discuss all our patients, uh, including the endocrine, the endocrine aspects, the neuroimaging aspects, the pathology aspects, the surgical aspects. Altogether, so each component is very important, and uh, uh, an extremely important subset of that is the neuroimaging. So, we're fortunate to have people like Jason, who are going to talk to us today about imaging of the pituitary gland. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Gabby, for those um, overly kind words. Um, too kind. Um, I'm hoping that um, by the end of this lecture, that um, all of you will gain some familiarity with the available imaging modalities for imaging the cell, and then acquire an approach or interpreting cellular imaging. And as um, the speakers before me kind of already talked about, um, you know, imaging the cell is important because pituitary pathology is relatively common, and having an understanding of exactly what's going on in the cell is important in, um, for management. Um, the primary um, method for imaging the cell is magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI. Due to its um, superior soft tissue contrast, it really is the best imaging modality for the cell. As we can see from this example, we can see that there is a large cellular supercellular mass, we can define its borders very well. We can define its contrast enhancement pattern. And we can see, more importantly, um, perhaps um, see what it's doing to the surrounding structures. In this particular case, um, it's actually indenting it on the brain stem. As well as um, having a lot of mass effect on the optic chiasm. So, you know, having that exquisite detail of what the tumor looks like as well as what it's doing to its surrounding structures is very important. And as of now, um, certainly MRI is the imaging modality of choice. But certainly there are patients out there who may not be able to get an MRI either, you know, due to um, implantable devices that are not MR compatible or, you know, just for whatever other reason, you know, computer tomography or CT is a potential alternative. Soft tissue contrast, not as good as MRI, but, you know, but can still give you some definition of what the cella is, um, looks like and what the mass is doing to the surrounding structures. And the one thing where CT potentially actually um, excels when compared to MR is actually in the um, quantification of calcification. This is actually the um, CT of the very same patient. And we can see that there's portions of the tumor on MRI that are very dark on this post-contrast image. And we know as radiologists that, you know, that could potentially happen from calcification. And indeed, you know, on CT, we see that in these areas where it's not enhancing. Indeed, we have these really, you know, bright spots here on CT that correspond to the calcium. But you can kind of see that MRI kind of underappreciates just how heavily calcify the masses. And kind of knowing that a mass is, has a lot of calcium 